thought that any one of those might be this person that was put in this position would be horrifying. Yeah, uh, Senator Adelham, thanks. <clears throat> thanks for coming in, Mr Stokes. And we heard from uh, some of your Channel 7 colleagues earlier in the other committee, and apologies yeah. that I missed you there. But um, you, you were in broadcasting, I believe, well before your tie-up with the West Australian newspaper, so your background's in yes, broadcasting. Yes. Um, can you tell us what impact it has on the independence of your journalists? I mean, you run a first-rate news current affairs slate on Channel 7 that hasn't come up for any critique during the course of this inquiry. But that station and those journalists are overseen by a government-appointed bureaucrat who can rip your licence. ACMA can take you off the air. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's one of the only powers they have, and they've come under critique for that. Mm -hmm. But what impact does that have on the editorial independence of your journalists at Channel 7? That um, has had no impact on them. So why are you suggesting that a much lighter degree of self-regulation in the newspapers will suddenly have such a dire impact on the editorial standards at your newspaper? It's not a lighter touch. It's a much heavier touch. It's not? OK. No well, appeal we'll contest that in a moment. Okay. But why do, you, why do you believe that statutory, full statutory regulation of a, of a regulator that can actually take you off air, as opposed to somebody overseeing the standards of what can constitute itself as a press council, how, how can you possibly argue that, that the latter is heavier regulation than the former? First of all, in regards to ACMA, we operate on a public asset of airwaves. No, I was asking more about no, editorial no, no, Sorry. Um, it's all part of the same answer because there is a reason for the overseeing and the regulation that I understand. Yep. And we go through a process and there are vigorous complaints that on our news, on current affairs, on all the things we do, there are complaints. They are handled by ACMA and we go through a process with them. And we have a number in discussion all the time. Because we're confident, um, our journalists still have to be accountable. They still have to be accountable sure. for those issues. Come back to newspapers, and editorial in particular, they're accountable to their readers. The difference is there is no public asset involved. There are no airwaves. We take nothing from the government. We run our own presses, and we give our journalists the opportunity to write their own stories. Do you think journalists should be required to meet the standards set by the journalist associations themselves? Um, no. No. I, think, I think anybody who can write an article that people will buy a newspaper to read, I'd like to have them, whether they're a journalist or not. Now, if you can write an article and people will buy a newspaper to read it, I'd like you to come join us. But when you, when you folk formed your own media council, and we're hearing from them, I think, first thing in the morning, I think we're hearing from the Australian Press Council a little bit later on as well, they have certain standards that Australians can trust the product of the news media because journalists take their profession very seriously, in my experience they mm -hmm. certainly do. Mm -hmm. Do you think they should, that journalists who sign up to those codes and are members or in entities that are members of the Press Council should have to actually meet those standards or are they just worthless? No, it depends who's, who's determining what standards. Well at the moment it's the APC, at the moment it's the Press Council determines its own and your, your colleagues have determined their own in the West. Mm -hmm. So and do you I, think journalists should then be required to actually meet those standards? Or be accounted for it, yes. Yeah. Or is this just a big PR exercise? No, do you think they should be required to meet those standards? The facts of the matter are that on ten or eight or ten occasions, I'll let the council give you their own evidence. I've not spoken yeah. to a member of that council for two over two years. I know the members on there. I've known Mr McKinty for at least 20 years. Yeah. I've not spoken to him for two years because of his position there. Yeah. I'll let him tell you how he and they determine their, their outcomes. But the facts are they are independent. I have no idea what they do. I do know we follow and agree with any rulings they bring down. But your strong objection seems to be you don't want somebody from the Commonwealth Government uh, deciding whether or not these standards are being met or not. Is that, is that the, kind of the key of your contention? Correct. OK, just explain for us why that is, if you have confidence that people are upholding Because standards. we're not using any public airwaves. We're not asking the Commonwealth to support it. This is private enterprise and it's a free newspaper. But Mr Stokes, you're the, only, the, you're, the only, only, you're only, only newspaper in my hometown since yes. Daily News went broke yes. quite some time ago. Yep. You are providing a public good. You're yes. a private, private operator providing a public yep. good. So do you think the public has any stake at all, for example, if on your front page you've just run a bunch of lies that have damaged somebody's interests? Well, they'll stop buying the newspapers out of it. Well, what else are they going to do? No, there's, a, there's other choices. Sunday there's internet, Times. Sunday Times. There are lots of other choices. And we, I can tell you, we fight very hard to keep every reader we've got. 
It's a tough business out there. Mm. Every time now you add a cost to the newspaper, or we lose readers, we lose journalists. Indeed. Well, this isn't a proposal to add cost. It's a proposal to add a measure of accountability. Um, but I would just, I guess I'll just come back to this contention that that a regulator of the electronic press, because what it seems to me that this is about is more to do with a grievance over the public interest test that would regulate mergers and acquisitions than it is over free speech. Ms Fair, you're shaking your head. Do you want yeah. to take me up on that? Yes, yes. Shaking my head. <laughs> You've shaken your head a lot this morning. Yeah. But uh, do you want to just... sorry process. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, I, I, d I just wanted to say that there are some very significant differences between what's proposed here for the PEMA and the, the regulations that we live under for broadcasters. Uh, for a start, what we have for broadcasting is a co-regulatory model where we determine our uh, standards in consultation with the regulator. That regulator is made up of a number of members, um, all of whom have a vote in relation to uh, how the activities of that uh, regulator are carried out. Um, there's uh, the subject of legal appeal and um, other due process. Uh, none of that is proposed to be the case in relation to this body. So should we bring newspapers under the ambit of ACMA or some successor body, which was one of the things that the Convergence Review contemplated? Is that a better bet? Well, no, I think we've made it pretty clear that as a matter of principle, we think that there should be freedom of the press. And, um, there is freedom of the press. There isn't a demonstrated problem, certainly not with the West, West Australian, about uh, whether we have standards and whether we rigorously adhere to them. Should the standards maybe be written up and incorporated in law? So you're concerned that the PEMA has very wide no. discretion. Should no. we simply embed those standards then? No. If I, if I choose tomorrow to go out, and I've done it once before in Canberra, and buy a printing press and start a paper, and I've done that before in Canberra too, yeah. and find that I live or die commercially on what I do, uh, I shouldn't be regulated in that. Why should I be? Well, what? Because, because you know, the, the, the press is not simply a commercial operation. There are public interest issues. That's why. Senator, the public issue was actually first raised by the Minister for Communications called Bud Davidson in '56 when he introduced the Broadcasting Act. And it was the broadcasting wasn't just a commercial undertaking like print. And there was a parliamentary distinction made between the two. The facts of the matter are, if you, it's a business like any other business. If you want to be a radical newspaper, then that's your choice. And people probably won't buy you. And if you want to be a newspaper that makes money, then you'll do what it is that makes money. Right. We're talking about newspapers, not public assets. But are you saying you have no public interest obligations apart from just to make money for your shareholders? I have an, the, the one, they're one and the same. They're one and the same. No, no I'm sorry, I would not. strongly contend that the public interest is identical to your commercial interest. It won't be a newspaper if Mr Stokes isn't making money for his shareholders. Absolutely. No, no, that's not the question no, I'm putting to you. It is the point. It's the facts of the matter question. are, newspapers are declining. This year will be 20% down on profit to last year, which was 30% down on the year before. Can I... I'm, I'm, the facts of the matter are, we'll close presses, and presses are going to get closed. There will be a cut-off point where there's an economic reality. You guys are adding overhead costs to us, you just bring it forward. Show us how this is an additional cost. And I do want to test your views on whether you believe you have no public interest obligations at all, apart from keeping your newspaper afloat and keeping your shareholders happy, as, an, as a publisher. And I think this is a key issue. Well, we publish online our editorial policy. Judge me by that. That's a written document, Ben, and I'll guarantee you're a West Australian senator. I am. You've never read our online editorial policy. That's why it's wonderful to have you here with us today. So I'm happy to refer to the written document, but it's pretty rare for us to get to ask you these questions directly. You, you can go online and look at our editorial policy, same as everybody else. But you don't policy. want to be held to it. You don't want anybody who of actually be held. Of course we're held to it by, by an independent council. We are held up. Oh, well, well, I'm contesting You're, the independence of the council, but I'll, we'll leave that till tomorrow. You'll leave that to, we'll to Mr. Mr. Us. McGinty. Um, we'll leave that there if you like, Chair. Well, yeah, uh, just really quickly, Chair. Mr. Stokes, have you received any guarantees that the processes and code and 